Hey, it's Joshua Vergar from Android Authority here at Google I.O. at the Project Tango booth, and I'm here with one of the uh, engineers of Project Tango, Johnny, and uh, I wanted to get some, uh, to get some extra information because I know that Tango in some ways might be somewhat of a mystery to some of you out there, so I wanted to get it from the actual people themselves, what Project Tango is from their words. So why don't we get a bit of an explanation about what Project Tango is, and we have seen uh, gaming uh, examples of it, but what else can Project Tango do? Sure. The, at a high level, the goal of Project Tango is to advance 3D sensing and tracking on mobile devices. Um, so we've been working with the hardware ecosystem and the software partners to advance both the sensors and the algorithms necessary to make these devices track their position and, and capture models of their space. Um, so one of the things that we've demoed a lot recently is uh, what you can do with just the tracking information, where we take that camera and uh, control either a Unity-based uh, 3D environment or an Unreal environment based uh, 3D environment. Um, we, and we add the data from the depth sensor. Um, this is where it starts to get into new code and new algorithms that aren't quite ready to put in the SDK yet, uh, but also why we haven't had so many demos. But we have a few demos here that essentially, as you walk through a space, you're actually able to capture the geometry of the floor and the walls and the furniture. And uh, outside of gaming, uh, well, inside of gaming, that allows you to have characters that sort of know how to navigate through your hallways or potentially play hide and seek in your, in your house in, in, because it knows where your closet is. Um, uh, but industrial applications and professional applications include real estate, where you're trying to estimate the square footage of your home. Uh, we have uh, apps from uh, Trimble, uh, which essentially start to explore, well, how much better could you make room scanning? Because uh, room scanning is, ends up being important for shopping for furniture or being able to figure out how much carpet you need or how many tiles that you want to put on the floor. Um, and then there's industrial inspection. So the, Trimble also has another uh, very early prototype of an experience where we've taken a 3D model of the Moscone Center, and once we recognize the position of the device in the Moscone Center, you can essentially get x-ray vision of where are the elevators, uh, where's the service stations for this particular pallet panel, and without having to walk around the building, uh, sort of uh, looking at the signs on the walls, you actually can hold up the tablet and see sort of through the walls. Um, um, would, would, uh, sorry, would, uh, uh, one, one question that just came to mind, um, for, for various applications I say consumers would be using, would the algorithms or the 3D D schematics, which um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, would they be made available for the various applications, or would the consumers be able to create those schematics themselves? So the amount of data that the device can generate from scratch is uh, relatively modest. It basically is uh, just the position of the device as you were holding it, and then rough geometry information. So that I can pick out uh, sort of rough walls and floors and some furniture, uh, since it has a 3D sensor to capture that geometry. Um, it does not automatically know about, say, where does the hot water pipe run through the wall. That requires having the CAD model uh, in advance or from other source. So, and chances are people don't won't have that available available in most buildings, but for professional and industrial uh, commercial uh, structures, that data may be available by the builder. So the, it's a seven inch tablet that has a Tegra K1 inside and uh, our custom design sensor. So we have a fisheye camera that's designed for motion tracking, which is in the middle. Uh, and if you think about human vision, we have a, a tremendously wide peripheral vision that, that expands out, uh, uh, gives us enormous amount of context about the way the environment is moving. And so what this does is gives us a wide field of view of the environment. And then we have a set of sensors on here that are depth sensors. Um, these are sensors that basically give us information about the the floor and the walls uh, to tell us what the geometry is. Uh, in this particular tablet, we have a structured light uh, depth sensor from a company called Mantis, uh, but we also have a prototype here of a depth sensor from a company called PMD Tech. Um, that has a different principle of operation, which is time of flight, uh, and the time of flight uh, has slightly different properties in that it doesn't require a large separation of sensors um, and potentially is more robust to sunlight. Um, but as we evolve, the hardware will continue to sort of push the push the Envelope in terms of the performance of those depth sensors. Sure. Um, so let me give you a quick tour of the software uh, that actually runs on a Project Tango device. Uh, this is our diagnostics tool, which just gives us uh, a view of the sensor data coming in. So on the left side of the screen, you can see this fisheye lens. Uh, in fact, I can still see the, my fingers just around the tablet. Uh, and so this is a super wide camera that, that allows us to understand the motion of the device. Yes. Uh, the so left those points are being tracked already. Yeah, so those green points are essentially uh, the image processing uh, doing optical flow. Okay. So this allows us to understand, well, uh, everything moved in the world uh, in a way that makes sense uh, okay. to the way the device was held. Uh, we also have the gyro and accelerometer data right below the image. Uh, 
that is essentially time synchronized with the with the camera. Mm -hmm. So this allows all the sensor data to come into the same time uh, or well timestamped, so we can make an estimate of where the device is. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I actually move the tablet left and right, or actually make a circle, you can actually see that it's actually tracing out oh, the circle yeah, right on over, the screen. Right over on the uh, screen right here. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to just walk around here a little bit, okay. and you'll see uh, the tracking showing up on the I'll, screen. I'll point at it over here, yeah. So Johnny's going to go off camera, and you'll see the tracking right here is actually taking where he is, and yeah. there he goes. <laughs> and you can see it's actually mapping the entire area that he is walking through using all of those sensors. And now we have this sort of, this kind of janky figure eight right here. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, tracing out my path. So yeah. one of the things we can do is uh, insert that path into a game environment. So this is one of the uh, Unity applications that we have will be part of the SDK, which is uh, how do you actually use this data for end user experience? And so what we've done is we've connected that tracking data to the Unity uh, camera. And this is a very simple game where essentially I just pick up the cube and put it on the switch. Uh, but to actually finish this game, I, I'm, you can see that I can't quite reach the cube from where I am now. Yeah. So I actually have to go walk forward to solve and is to that the using, cube. Is that using the data that you just tracked? Uh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, so that this ability to track the physical motion of the device yes. is now being piped into Unity. Um, so if I pick up this green switch block, sorry, I can see that the green switch is actually over there on the booth. You have to walk so over there. I'll come back. All right. <laughs> and. There you go. So this, so this basically introduces motion into mobile gaming. So if I move forward in the real world, I actually move forward in the virtual space as well. So this allows uh, game developers, or application developers, to start thinking about, well, how would I actually use my physical room, either my, my living room or my office space, and actually use this inside the game? Um, which is, if you can imagine, now that I understand where I am in my house or my environment, and I actually have a little bit of geometry data, uh, I can sort of transform my environment into a fantasy world. So again, I'm just using the tablet as a camera controller. I can look at the trees and the stones. Uh, but I also see on the ground, there's a small wizard. Um, so you know, if we crouch, if I crouch down, I can get down to the wizard's level and interact with him. Um, so essentially, if I have the ability to uh, place these assets, I can start transforming parts of my living room into a fantasy environment. So I could imagine, you know, my living room is a fantasy world versus the my bedroom is uh, another sort of safe haven or you know an ice land, and you can actually use physical space as part of the game. Uh, if we had game a game that actually understood the shape of the Moscone Center, you could imagine actually having multiple people uh, walk around this space competing with each other for territory. Do you think that would not be very dangerous, though? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually have a, a personal desire to see a game at some point that causes two people to actively tackle each other. <laughs> but, but we'll see if that actually comes to, comes to fruition. Here's a, an app from a university partner that we just got recently that actually combines the uh, real-time data of the tracking with the depth sensing that we have. Um, I will see if this runs. This was a, an app that we just got a few days ago. Okay. So what this is doing right now is actually combining both the tracking data and the depth sensor data to allow us to create a, a 3D capture of the space. Oh, it's like, oh, that's actually imaging the Yeah. So this is like world. I'm painting the environment with my camera. And I can back up, and I'll scan you into the space. OK. That's supposed to be me right there, yeah. So, so this is a, you know, a very a simple mesh that we're building in real time. Uh, but as the software improves and as the hardware improves in terms of its accuracy, uh, we can imagine that the quality of this data continues to get higher and higher uh, uh, fidelity. If we actually stored the data and did more post-processing on it, uh, app developers could actually get much, much higher quality. But this is just what we could process in real time. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so these are sort of the building blocks you can imagine allowing developers to start building use new user experiences that use both motion as well as physical geometry uh, to uh, create new apps.
Okay. Do you think that uh, next year, maybe for IO 2015 or 2016, you'll be able to create that game using the Moscone Center schematic? <laughs> uh, I think that would be a really neat target to aim for. That would we'll, be cool, huh? We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. There's a lot of things that have to sort of improve on both the software okay. side and the hardware side to make yeah. it happen. Oh, I'm, and I'm sure it's going to get there. I mean, you got some great minds working on it. And the way, the where it is already, I'm, I'm astounded. This is really wonderful. <laughs> like, it's great. All right, well, thank you very much. And um, yeah, you know, keep it tuned here. We have Project Tango. As it, uh, as it happens, we're going to be covering it as it comes along. It's a wonderful, wonderful suite of technology that we have here. And Johnny, one of the minds behind it, thank you so much for, uh, for, for fielding our questions and for giving us a demo of it. Thanks very All much. Right. Take care. All right, this is Android Authority coming to you live from Google I.O. 2014.